support group in Christchurch, and this is Claire Simpson, who's our um, chairperson. So we're going to do this pretty much as sort of like a conversation or an interview, and so Claire gets to ask the first question. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so we had an earthquake. That was an interesting context, so what happened next? Okay, well the thing that, well I can handle that. Um, as uh, Patrick said, there was the share and idea process which the Christchurch City Council got started and basically what this involved is that they, they, they ran a, a process which actually gained them a huge amount of kudos, but they got around about 100,000 ideas from all sorts of people right across Christchurch. Now, Christchurch is a city of about 400,000 people, and uh, if you say 100,000 ideas, if you're a bit conservative, you'd say, well, maybe people put in more than one, maybe put in two, or maybe three. We'll say three, so that's 30,000 people participating in this process, which is an absolutely enormous success. Um, and you know, the guys that, and women that put that thing together they quite justifiably got a huge amount of awards and all the rest of that for that process. But one of the things that came out of that was around 20% um, of those ideas were supportive of, in particular, cycling, but also walking. And they weren't just, um, you know, we don't like cycles or anything like that. They were actually, most, the great majority of them were supportive ideas. So that was the thing that's underpinned a huge amount of our um, effort ever since that time. So that, process finished about two years ago. One of the things that fo uh, followed from that, as you might know, there's a whole heap of legislation that was shoved through Parliament and all the rest of it, but one of the things that came out of it was the um, uh, Central City Development Unit, which was set up by the government to manage redevelopment in the central part of Christchurch. Now they put together a blueprint. Now that blueprint um, is quite controversial. It's um, some people call it draconian, but what it does is set out the framework under which um, Christchurch, particularly the central part of Christchurch, will be redeveloped. Because one of the things that people are often not aware of is that there's about, um, probably about 50% of the buildings inside the central part of Christchurch will be demolished. So they haven't all the Well, yeah, but some of them need to help. But, um, <laughs> And the next thing that sort of happened, and again in putting this in context, so there's, there's these three things which are really, really important. Uh, just recently, our 10-year long-term community plan, LTCCP, has been replaced by a three-year plan on the direction of the, um, of the Minister of Earthquake Recovery. So, the thing that uh, I want to talk about now is, or ask Claire about the way that um, Spokes in particular has managed its um, contact with key people in this process. So if you want to start clear with Sarah. Okay, I came into Spokes about two years ago um, being completely new to this whole area. So I'm a keen rider, and I certainly didn't know anything about the legislation, the planning processes or anything like that, and certainly not the acronyms, which all sound the same to me. And I became chair about a year ago because I was quite keen to get things moving and I was frustrated a little bit. So um, I think one of the things that's emerging is seize the moment. So the earthquake provided us with enormous opportunities but we weren't quite sure how it will pan out. And um, through the actions of the gap filler, which was one of the community initiatives where they fill a gap with a transitional or transitory kind of art installation or an activity usually, the cycling powered cinema got going and there was about nine bikes hooked up to make a projector work and um, we watched cycling movies including um, old road safety films with chimpanzees on bikes um, in the evenings. And Roger Sutton or Sarah turned up one evening because he likes riding, we all know he's a keen rider. And one of our members just soldered up to him and um, knowing that our AGM was coming, we were scratching our heads for a good speaker. He said, oh, can you come and talk to our AGM? And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that meant that we got Roger Sutton cornered, and uh, willingly so, um, and he gave us some really good pointers about like, you know, what can you do in this environment? And he even suggested, you know, we ship all those cones to where we want them to be. You know, why not? They're movable. Oh, now, I'm going to ask 
David to talk a little bit more about the um, blueprint and what it involves in some of the contractual obligations. By the way, the Sharon idea gave us a lot of leverage with the City Council because whenever we went to them, we could say, well, the people of Christchurch said, and that's been very good for us. Liam Curry and I went to a, a committee meeting of environment and infrastructure, and we have a councillor called Aaron Kewan who sort of shoots his mouth off and then later on may, may or may not think about what he said. And at this meeting, after Glenn gave a really good presentation, um, Aaron, who's the chair, got up and said, oh, people don't ride because they're lazy. I know, because I don't ride and I know I'm lazy. But <laughs> last night I bought, bought a bike, I'm going to change, um, and we've got to ride to work once a week. And then a discussion around the table ensued about whether or not they would support what also had been presented. It was a staff um, planning thing on um, seven or eight site fit infrastructure projects. And um, the meeting went from, no, no, we can't possibly, and then how we'll never get all seven approved at council, why don't we just pick um, three? Well, two would be better because we were more to be sure to get two rather than three. And they went round in circles debating this, and then Aaron said, let's be bold. And someone else said, yes, of course, we are a cycling, um, we are a cycling council, aren't we? And then someone else said, yes, and share an idea, said all those people want, um, sorry, want to cycle, so we're bound to do this. And then they said, all right, well, we'll, we'll approve um, three of them. So they went, the whole thing went to the city council, and when Aaron said, we think three, blah, blah, Mia Bob said, well, we're a cycling council, aren't we? We'll do all seven. We'll put $69 million into it. So here we've got money and it's budgeted and hopefully we'll run. Shall we talk about that? I guess it's worth adding to that is that we've had multiple submissions where there have always been, cycling is nice, but it's too expensive. You'd say, but share an idea. And I'd say, cycling is nice, but it's too expensive. But then the suddenly came the break point, and the break point really was Councillor Kean, who, as um, Claire said, does make you scratch your head a wee bit sometimes. Um, it was his move that actually broke the dam, broke the logjam, and um, once he got the, that thing through that council committee, then we were away. But um, one of the things that Patrick said before is something about, well, I'll believe it when I see it built, and that's actually a fair comment. The um, it's in the draft plan, it, the uh, money is allocated year by year by year over the next three years, but nevertheless, you know, you do have to temper that with a little bit of um, realism and uh, think that, well, you know, we will believe it when we see it, but on the other hand, we are so much further ahead than we were six months ago. Um, the thing that I was going to just finish off asking there is, uh, it is, there are challenges around this, particularly for us as an advocacy organisation. And Claire was going to um, talk to you too about two of those, because they are actually really, really important. Ones. <laughs> 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 well, I think in Christchurch, um, I eventually, just when I thought I got the hang of the council planning processes, the ten-year LTTTD XYZ plan and the five-year XYZ nine nine point three plan and the regional something and the district something, um, all of that came to a halt and now we have a three-year plan. So what we've faced is all of these planning processes have been contracted into a very small time frame, and because they're so important, we feel really um, the need to be um, vigilant. And it's quite an ask on our group because the other challenge we're facing is that some of us are earthquake victims ourselves. And I myself am stepping down from the chair in order to concentrate on my housing reinstatement, if you don't know what that means. And poor old Dirk, who works very hard on our submissions and has recently broken his ankle, uh, he has to rebuild his house. So we're going to face some challenges as a small group, but we know we need to be vigilant. So we're having that discussion at the moment.